What you feed yourself matters. What you feed yourself. What you feed yourself matters. Food in a spiritual sense, food in a spiritual sense represents doctrine. It represents reports. Food in a spiritual sense represents thoughts, mindsets, and systems. Food in a spiritual sense represents emotions, desires. See, God created desires and Satan created temptations. Because a temptation is really a desire that's out of season or is out of your authority. You'll have to watch the replay to understand that. When God told Adam not to eat from the tree, Satan turned it into a temptation because it was out of Adam's authority. Adam, the woman, Adam, the man. It was out of their authority. When user went, go catch the Ark of the Covenant, it was out of his authority. And it was not only out of his authority, it was out of season. Because that was not his season to catch an ark. When Lot's wife looked back, she was tempted, but that was outside of her authority to look back. Because remember, it was the three men and then the two, the two men went into Sodom and Gomorrah, which were angels, and told her to go. To leave Sodom. Now, saints, the story about Lot and his wife is very profound because both of them struggled with the prophetic word. Which is why I love times like these. I love times like these. I love times of warfare because it always reveals people's hearts. If you ever want to know who are God's friends, you will only find it in warfare. You will only find it in warfare. You will not find the friends of God on mountains. You will only find the friends of God in valleys. If you want to know who believes God, send them 10 bad reports and you'll know. God has not destroyed Satan and demons because Satan and demons are there to expose to you where you are in the spirit. God will let us a, a, a devil's work around you just so that you can locate your heart. Where are you standing on the word or on the natural, on the feelings? On the emotions. Jude chapter one says something very powerful and the prophet began to declare. He says that there is a type of people that they are sensual, not having the spirit. Jude, the prophet, was very powerful because he was such a strong prophet that he was able to tap into Enoch's angels, Enoch's grace, Enoch's mantle. And Enoch was able to reveal to him what he saw. And Enoch had not spoken to anyone physically about this, but he was able to telepathically transfer to Jude because Jude was surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses. He was able to tap into. But see, Jude, how did he tap into all of this? Because he knew how to pray in the spirit. Remember, I've been warning you this year to become more spirit than flesh because Jude he learned how to pray in the Holy Ghost real strong so he's able to move in these different dimensions of mantles having prophets impart their same spirit to him for him to know the knowledge that they carried
But look what Jude said. The prophet said this. He said that there's a people that are sensual, not having the spirit. But then he goes on to say to build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, there's something significant that. He said that build up yourself in your most holy faith, meaning that there's levels to faith and there's different types of faith. There's a faith that becomes holy. That means that it's sanctified. That means that it cannot be accessed by demons. When he said that there is a faith that is holy, that means that demonic presence dies in the presence of that faith. That faith cannot be touched. It cannot be corrupted. It cannot be bothered. It cannot be tampered with. It cannot be lowered. It cannot be weakened. It cannot be torn. It cannot be lost. That faith is a holy faith. It's God's faith. The great God Jehovah giving you his mentality. Now, how does faith come? Faith coming by the word. So if he said that you could build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, here's what I want you to catch. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, is going to give you a word. The Holy Ghost. And when I say it, I don't mean the Holy Ghost. I mean the activity. When I say it, I'm talking about tongues. When I say that it's going to give you a word, well, I'm saying that activity is designed to give you a word. Praying in the Holy Ghost, you get to your most holy faith and you can only get to your most holy faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, I believe that is. He said by hearing the word of God. So when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, that activity positions you to hear God give you a word. But I want you to catch this in the spirit. Not only does praying in the Holy Ghost position you for God to give you a word. You notice he said, building up yourself in your most holy faith. He said that before you pray in the Holy Ghost. Before he said praying in the Holy Ghost, he said, build up yourself in your most holy faith. So saints, you could access your most holy faith by just hearing a word come out of a prophet. But you got to pray in the Holy Ghost to seal that most holy faith. See, these are two different realms. There's two different realms here. It's two different realms. You should watch the replay to, to really just decipher all of that. You can access the most holy faith if a prophet is speaking to you. But you're going to have to also do the second part, which is praying in the Holy Ghost to seal it. Now, I want you to hear this. You can't flow in both realms. You can't flow in both realms. Anybody that has anxiety attacks is a person that flows, tries to flow. You can't flow, but you'll try to flow in both realms. You can't flow in both realms. You have to give yourself over to the spirit to only hear God, or you have to give yourself over to the flesh to only hear Satan. You can't do both. This has been the danger of technology and knowledge and things that has been given. And see, that's why you see people less and less moving in the spirit. You see people less and less because the Bible talks about don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, but the cell phone has become a satanic device. The TV has become a satanic device. Computers have become satanic devices because it's birthing ignorance. And watch this here. Ignorance does not mean that you don't know. Even though we have heard that ignorance also means that you did know, but you choose to go back to the place of not knowing. Saints, do you really think that people perish? Do you think that all of them are perishing because they lack knowledge or 
Do you understand that the lack of knowledge means that the demon of lack is able to steal the knowledge even when it comes to you? My people perish for lack. So, so lack is a demon. If we don't deal with of knowledge, lack is a demon. So that demon of lack can come even when you have the knowledge and put you back into the position of lacking. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You can't serve two masters. See, Elisha, he called Elijah master. So even when the sons of the prophet came to Elisha, Elisha shut them up. You know why? Because he had already decided what master he was going to serve. He had decided, I'm sticking with this word that's coming out of heaven. I'm sticking out with this word that's coming out of faith, that's coming out of my prophet. When the spirit speaks to you, don't try to confirm it with the natural. Somebody got to write that down. When the spirit speaks to you, don't try to confirm it with the natural. Somebody need to write that down. I said, when the spirit speaks to you, don't try to confirm it with the natural. Jesus is talking to a man that has an infirmity for 38 years, King Jesus. And he says, will thou be made whole? Do you know the first thing the man does is start talking to Jesus about the natural. Isn't that ironic that he does not even answer the question. He starts giving King Jesus a summary of what's going on in the natural. Do you know what he begins to say? You know, I don't have nobody to put me in here. You know, all right. I've been trying to make it on my own. I don't know what to do. All right. I've been trying to get inside this pool for the longest time. I ain't take a shower in a long time, Jesus. I don't know if I, I don't know if you want to be praying for me right now because I haven't been, I haven't gotten into water a long time. I, I used to have my baby used to put me in the water. She used to give me some baths, but I don't even know what I'm going to do. All right. And Jesus looks at the natural man. And say, will thou be made whole? Saints, do you understand what King Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, will, he's dealing with his soul. And then he says, whole, he's dealing with heaven, heaven's report. Prophecy. He's saying, will you let your soul receive heaven? Will you let your soul receive the prophetic word or are you going to stay in the natural? But you can't serve both. Now, I can release the miracle, but guess what? The miracle will only be there for a while. Why? Because as long as you're in the natural, the demons can come right back and do what they want. But I need your soul to agree with only me. Yeah. Yeah. I need your soul to agree with only me. God will let you experience anything in this life so that you could realize that everything else does not matter except what he told you. God is looking for agreement. You know what it said without faith is impossible to please God. Faith really means agreement. The spirit was talking to me about it before I got on here. What do you mean? The spirit was talking to me. Before I got on here. Faith means agreement. I know that you heard that it means believing. We know that. But faith means agreement. When he said that without faith, it's impossible to please God. That means that without agreeing, 
You know what happens when you don't agree? You become curious of what the enemy is saying. You become curious of other information, other paths, other, other knowledges, other assignments, other people, other geographical locations, other thoughts, other options. Adam, the man and Adam, the woman did not agree with God. That's why they did what God said not to do. They did what God said not to do because they didn't agree with him telling them not to do it. The secret behind Yuza is that he already knew that he wasn't supposed to touch the ark. So even if he tries to catch it to help God, so to speak, and, that, and that's the secret. Most times you think that you're helping God when you're killing yourself. God tells you he wants you to sit in the classroom until five o'clock and it's only 12 noon and you keep looking at your watch. You think you're helping God, but you're actually killing yourself because the more you look at your watch, the more you get time minded instead of assignment minded. And you forget that it's not even just until 5 p.m. You got to realize that every moment counts. So I need to stop looking at until 5 p.m. and start realizing until I surrender. I need to switch the until, not to until 5, but until I surrender. I need to get into the proper mode. Let me stop looking at how fast or how quick something can happen from God in my life but start looking at the fact that myself is becoming the image of God. Me. Joseph, when he was thrown into the prison, he had a revelation. Even though I'm thrown into an injustice here, even though it looks like the devil is riding over my head here, even though it's looked like something is happening to me that's not supposed to be happening to me. Guess what? I'm going to be my best because I know that if God lets this happen, I can prove to him something that he's looking for. There's something that he's looking for from me. So if he lets this happen, if he let Potiphar wife, if he let her lie, and I, I tell the truth, I said I didn't sleep with her, and she wins, and they lock me up, and it looks like the judge even looked at me and said, yeah, you, you violated this man's wife. You shouldn't have slept with her, and all type of stuff is going on, and he goes to jail, and he never goes to God and rushes God. He never goes to God and said, how long am I going to be here, Lord? He never goes to God and says, Lord, why are you letting this happen to me? But he finds the portal in which he can agree with God. Can you find the portal that God is looking for? That's carrying your agreement in moments that seem unjust. That's why so many people, they miss God, because even when Lot's wife, she doesn't see that it's a portal for her to go to the next level as a queen, for her to go to the next level as a virtuous woman. She says, curse God and die. Why? Because she does not believe. She's looking at the natural. She don't have any more Chanel bags. She can't buy her favorite makeup. She can't kiss her daughter on the cheek or her son, give her son a hug. She can't ride the same camels or, 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 or the different possessions that they was carrying to different locations like used to be. And she's looking at the natural and is deciding whether or not she even perceived the portal to agree with God. Lot does not want to get out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because he does not agree. He does not agree. 
The angel hastens him and he still does not agree. The angel has to violently wrestle with him. And finally he gets out. Your agreement matters. You have to get out of that mode of constantly trying to get God to do this or God to do that or God to do this and start realizing what is the portal of agreement. Let me find the portal of agreement until God manifests something else. If God lets things be as is, there's something in this portal that I need to agree with. It's not always a situation because sometimes God don't want you to agree with situations. I'm talking about is a mentality. Watch. God can want to move you from your house, right? Move you from the place where you're living. But if you get so anxious in God moving you from that place and you take on the wrong mindset, that portal of agreement is stopped up. You see what I'm saying? What I'm telling you that every day of your life, there are portals of agreement that you have to find with God. And you have to become protective of your faith. You know when it said guard your heart with all diligence? It was talking about guarding your faith. And do you know how do you guard your faith? You guard your information system. Guard what you see, what you hear. You notice that what God did was he put Adam in a garden and had the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. And then tells him not to eat from it, but yet is in his sight. You notice that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is in Adam's sight. Why is it in his sight? Because you walk by faith and not by sight. So God let sight be there so that the faith can work. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my carapa. He let the sight be there so that the faith could be tested. He let the sight be there so that the faith can grow. He let the sight be there so that the faith can move. He let the sight be there so that the faith can work. He let the sight be there so that the faith can stretch its wings and begin to fly. He let the faith go to a next level while the sight was right there looking at something that was adversarial. But did God put that tree in the uh, the knowledge of good and evil in his presence for him to study the tree? No. That's why we're in this world, but not of this world. There are things that go on in the world. You're not supposed to study it. You're not supposed to be looking at it. It's not supposed to consume your day. It's not supposed to consume your time because you're in a spiritual garden and your job is to keep on in the realm of faith, not in sight because sight is where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is. Sight is where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is. If you want to fall out of your anointing, if you want to lack oil, if you want to let your garment get filthy, all you have to do is start living your life by sight. All you have to do is start making decisions by sight. All you have to do is start connecting with people just because of sight. Start talking with old connections just because of sight. Start sleeping with people just because of sight. If you want to lose your soul, just live by sight. When Elisha saw the Syrian army coming up against him, yes, he, he prayed for the young man to see the angels, but there was something powerful here. And this is a powerful revelation. It never been preached before. And it just came to me while I was talking. He tells the young man, da-da, da-da, da-da. But then, remember what Elisha did. He blinded the Syrian army. Why did he blind them? The Syrians were enemies. Elisha blinds them because Elisha knows the root of their witchcraft. The reason why they are so rebellious and they hate God and they're enemies to God is because they chose to live their life through sight. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> He shuts off the very 
area that made them God's enemies. He shuts off the very area that made them adversarial. He shuts off the very area that caused them to even hate prophets. 